All right, everyone. Thank you. And thank you for attending this session this evening. You know, we have done a great job of having all of you all show up for all of our sessions earlier in the week, but we took a little quick break and now we're back and we're better with our next session, creating your leadership experience with Turner Construction panelists, as you can see on the screen now. They're going to have a great, great, great session with you all this evening. And I know you all are going to learn a lot, so please stay tuned. Um, you got to move to the next slide. You know what I always like to do with you all um, is to make sure that you know who is sponsoring us. For without them, we would not have these lovely panelists that we have this evening. Um, and this, is, this session would not be able to happen. So thank you all for uh, everything that you give to our program so we can give back to our students. We can go ahead and move on to the next slide. So of course, a lot of you all have heard me say this before if you are returning from earlier in the week, but I'm going to say it again. What is she? Sheila. Sheila is pronounced Sheila. I know some people say Shyla, some people say something else, but it is pronounced Sheila. It is our Sweet Next High School Leadership Academy program. It is a year year uh, sorry year round virtual engaging engaging program that is specifically and caters to our high school girls. So it's just tailor made for you all. It is three week long summits. Um, and it helps you to build self-confidence and resilience, and especially for those that are interested in doing engineering and technology degrees. So it also provides you all with multiple opportunities to network with your peers, mentors, role models, and industry professionals. And I know a lot of you all probably raising your hand and saying yes, because you probably don't always get that in school all the time. Sometimes you all are in classes by yourselves with a group full of boys. So now you get to let your head down and be yourself here with us tonight. Um, uh, we highlight five key program tracks for STEM success. So we do college preparation, STEM pathways, leadership, self-development, cultural awareness, and inclusion. So all five of these are going to be covered because they're important to making you a well-rounded professional in the industries you guys are seeking to be a part of. Uh, we have two modes of delivery. One, of course, you're participating in now, which is our live sessions. And then we also offer those live sessions as on-demand recordings after this is over with. Every Everybody is always on me about getting those sessions out. Trust me, trust me, trust me. I know you guys are waiting for those on-demand recordings to go up in the Google Classroom. Um, we try to get them out in about one to two days of processing time, but all of the videos actually go up after the week uh, is over with. So just keep that in mind as you guys are preparing to uh, view the content online. All sessions will have a Google takeaway assignment that you must complete. Why do I need to complete more homework? I'm sure y'all guys will want more homework, but this one is beneficial because you get to do 10 of those takeaway assignments and receive a certificate of completion. Now, again, I stress this, y'all want to keep those portfolios growing. So that's just a way for you to have an additional thing in your portfolio that will help you continue to look great as you all enter into your college engineering program. And this also will allow you to get access to our graduation ceremony on April 21st. So don't forget about that, guys. All right, so now we're going to move into our quick wins for this evening. You go to the next slide. So by the end of this session, you all will be able to identify ways to prepare now for college, understand the importance of self-advocacy, recognize your skill set and expand upon them, and then learn the importance of building your own personal brand. Now, you know me, I love to talk, but tonight it's time for somebody else to take over this role. So your moderator is somebody who is phenomenal, that has represented her company well and is going to show you exactly why she is good at what she does. She is going to be your moderator. Her name is Kelsey Ellis, and I'm going to go ahead and give the floor to you, girl. Have a good time with it. <laughs> Thanks, Rakita. I appreciate it so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey Ellis. I'm the current procurement manager for the Turner Chicago office. Um, I started my career with Turner nine years ago in our San Diego office. Um, I started as an intern working on the San Diego New Central Library while I was in school at UC San Diego with a getting my degree in structural engineering. Um, when I was hired full time, I started working on a 16 story high, high rise for Semper Energy headquarters in the downtown San Diego area, running structure straight out of school. Um, moving on to my next project, I was working on a four and a half acre, 36 story high rise in the downtown San Diego area as well, all next to ballpark or uh, Petco Park. Uh, my project was Ballpark Village. You can see all three of my buildings from the Padres Stadium, which is pretty cool. Um, 
In 2016, I wanted a life change, something different. I moved out to Chicago with Turner, where I was working on a veterans home out here and then um, got an opportunity to work in our Detroit office to kick off a high rise up there, which was about a $500 million project. Um, that project, unfortunately, never really got started. And so I came back to Chicago and worked on a dorm project. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I am really passionate about um, growing women in STEM and bringing people, women, young women up through the STEM programs and mentoring them into how great it is working in the STEM field. Um, my passion is construction and I lead our Habitat for, Hum women, Habitat for Humanity Women Build team every year where we help build women-led households, households on the south side of Chicago. So it's a pretty impactful program and it's um, just a great part to give back to the community. Um, so with that, I'm going to actually introduce the rest of our panel. They're gonna actually introduce themselves, I should say. Um, so ladies, if you want to just say your name, business unit, years with Turner, what your current role is, and the, where you went to school, and what your major was. So with that, we're going to kick it off with Erica. Good evening, Sheila. How are you? Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Um, my name is Erica Shelton. I am the senior cost analyst out of um, Tampa, Florida, Orlando Business Unit, Tampa, uh, and Miami. Um, I have been with Turner for 16 years and I've been in multiple roles. I started in Chicago, so similar to uh, what, what Kelsey mentioned, moving around a lot with the, with the company. Uh, I've been an engineer, superintendent. I also was a procurement agent and now senior cost in finance. Um, my, uh, I already said my current role. So I graduated from school in, uh, from Colorado State a university, go Rams, the Rams, not the Buffalo for whoever knows that rivalry, so get it right. And then um, I, I did start out with um, a different major. So I initially started out uh, as an architecture major and then ended up in construction management. So that's how I ended up with this awesome company. Thank you, Erica. That was wonderful. Go Chicago. Um, so with that, we're going to hand it over to Brache, who, side note, works in the Chicago office now. So, <laughs> Oh, man, I feel all the Chicago luck. So my name is Brache Anderson. I have been with Turner six years, and I actually just transferred to Chicago from Charleston, South Carolina, and I've lived in Charlotte, North Carolina with Turner also. So I went to school at North Carolina a and State University, and my major is construction management. Fun fact, like Miss Erica, I started off as an engineer major too, except I was in civil, and I decided very fast that construction was my passion because I love the whole aspect of actually building something and seeing my work come to like fruition. So I moved into that role of construction management in college. I am working now with Turner in the Chicago business as interiors lead engineer on the Obama Presidential Library. And that is my story. Awesome. Thanks, Brache. Um, so with that, we're going to kick it over to Elise. Hi, ladies. My name is Elise Nagy. I am an engineer for the Cleveland, Ohio office, which is far less exciting of a location than other ladies if you've ever been to Ohio. Um, I am currently a budget and cost engineer for um, the Metro Health Glick Center, which is a $529 million 10-story bed tower. Um, it's a four-year project, and it's been really exciting for the city of Cleveland. Um, what am I missing? Oh, I've been at Turner for eight and a half years, but I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Elise. And last but not least, Sabrina. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Sabrina Ransbarger. I've been with Turner for three years, so um, pretty recent out of college. Um, I'm in the Dallas office, so it's not a coup from the Chicago team. There are other people not in Chicago. <laughs> uh, Texas born and raised. I've never been to Chicago. I'd love to come. Hopefully, all uh, will let me visit. Um, but I am currently an engineer on one of our special projects divisions. So smaller projects that I'm doing an interior finish out, so focusing a lot on finishes. Um, I started out, I interned and then started out my first year in the procurement group. So definitely enjoyed that role in that team. Um, I went to UT Austin, University of Texas at Austin, and my major was architectural engineering. I stuck with it the whole time, but I will say I did not know what I wanted to do when I started college. Um, I was 
really thinking I wanted to do architecture. My brother was an engineer and convinced me to do architectural engineering. And I will say, if anyone's on the fence about, I don't know if I want to do civil or construction or architecture, it was a really great starting off place because I felt like I had access, equal access to like at least four different career paths. So if anyone has questions about that, I'd love to talk about it, but highly recommend becoming an RG. Awesome. Thanks, Sabrina. So before we get into the rest of our presentation, I think, Marquita, this is a great time to do another gift card question. Let's do another gift card question. Okay. Hmm. Let's do... Where is... Where is Sabrina based out of? Where is she located now? And that's one... Okay, well, that was quick. Y'all are paying attention. I'm not mad. I picked the one who wasn't as, as okay, y'all. I love y'all for that. Hira, you actually answer first, so you get the gift card. Our second winner for the evening. Go, girl. All right. We can go on and give her that card and move on to the next part. <laughs> Amazing. Congratulations. Um, so with that, I actually am going to kick it back over to Sabrina. And she's going to talk a lot, a little bit about some tips and tricks for as you transition into your college career. So Sabrina. Yeah, thank you. And thank you all for paying attention. <laughs> um, so I kind of split this up into things that you can do now while y'all are still in high school preparing to go to college and then some things to keep in mind right as you're starting college. So uh, things that are in your power now, most schools offer something um, that you can knock off of your curriculum in college. So there's different programs, different types of courses, but there's AP, there's dual credit, or, you know, some community colleges, maybe they don't call it dual credit, but they might let you do something over the summer. So just make sure you're trying to knock off any freshman credits that you can. Honestly, it's easier to do it while you're in high school. It gives you a jump start, and then it's a GPA saver because you're not taking a core class in college. Um, and then another one is make sure you find a mentor early on. There's actually a program in, I'm from Lubbock, Texas, a smaller town um, that had just a group that like linked us up to UT Austin mentors, um, like school counselors and stuff like that in high school. So that helped me kind of get a lay of the land early on. Um, but reaching out to guidance counselors or anything that you can at your school or people who have resources that can help you understand um, what do you want to do, where should you go for that, just people that can help you along the way. When you are thinking about starting college, uh, one of the biggest tips I would say is don't buy your textbooks, TBH. Um, a lot of professors write the textbooks themselves and they want to make money from it, so I don't want to like cut into their funds but like they're too expensive and they send out a new edition every year or every other year and not much change. So just kind of go into it smart. Don't feel like you have to show up to the first day of class with your textbook. The professor probably wants you to, but like, honestly, I never did that. I would go to the first day of class, kind of get a vibe for what the professor would say. Some professors would be like, hint, hint, wink, wink, the textbook is online and you can find a copy, don't buy it. Some professors will be like, yeah, you can do older versions like, it'll be fine. And some professors are like, no, like you have to get the most recent one. Um, so just get a feel or, you know, look at ratemyprofessors.com. Uh, that could have feedback from students that were in that class before. So just kind of do the research before you spend a ton of money on textbooks, because they can be really expensive. Like one book could be $400. So really like be careful about <laughs> what you're getting. But I will say that if you're getting a textbook for a class that you're passionate about and that you're going to use potentially for the rest of your life, don't hesitate to get that book. I have a ton of college textbooks still that honestly, sometimes I look at, um, I've got like construction contracts and stuff that's useful to me now. So again, use your best judgment and kind of get what you think you need, uh, but don't feel like you have to buy a textbook. And then honestly, don't buy from the university store, just get it on Amazon or some cheap place online or maybe a thrift bookstore, um, your university will have plenty of revenue streams. So don't feel like you have to support the bookstore. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't say that, but that's my advice. <laughs> Another thing is really get to know ratemyprofessors.com and any um, sort of information uh, related to that, again, for textbooks, but also just to pick your professors. Some professors will be kind of just unnecessary when you can take another professor that would be more helpful 
um, especially with your learning style. So a lot of people give feedback on um, what a professor is like. So definitely use that resource. And then some things that y'all should think about when you're starting college, um, coming into your freshman year. You know, making friends might be hard. I went to college with a high school friend, so it was a little easier for me to jump off, but like a lot of people go on their own. Um, totally valid paths either way, whether you stay home, leave, whatever. I really recommend living in the dorms freshman year. I think most universities require it anyway, unless you have like family in town. Um, that's a really great way to make friends. You kind of have to, like you're around a bunch of new people, you're eating at the canteen. So I really think that's a great way to make friends. Um, another thing is to join student orgs. There's going to be a student org for like every interest you could possibly think of. So that's a great way to meet new people and make friends. And I would say in that, make sure you get a good mix of fun student orgs or hobbies or something fun to do. Um, Someone just, Mary just said SWE, of course, most colleges will have a chapter of SWE. You should definitely get involved with SWE. Um, but yeah, there's dance or sports groups. Um, but I also recommend always making sure you have a professional group in the mix because you want to make friends and have fun, but also have an avenue to make professional connections that will help you towards the end of your college career. Another thing, uh, get acquainted with your professors and TAs early on in a class. Um, it's intimidating, especially when you're younger in college, when you're a freshman and sophomore, but they're really there to help you. You know, your lecture halls of like 200 students, they're less there to help you specifically than your smaller lectures. So like, of course, you're kind of going to have to get a feel for the professor and how much they care about you individually, but they're going to care about you individually the more and more and more that they know you and they'll be able to help you answer questions. But on that, always start the homework before you go to office hours. Don't feel like you can just sit in there and like, listen or ask stupid questions not stupid but like the professor will get annoyed if you haven't started doing your homework so at least always take a look at it and try to take a crack at it even if you don't feel like you're ready to that way the professor can see that you're putting effort into your studies um, that'll go a long way and then universities have so many resources um, from mental they have academic counseling and mental health academic there's tutors and study groups and study partners and UT Austin um, does FIG groups, so first year interest groups. It's a way to get freshmen in a group, another way to make friends um, and just be a resource. So colleges will always set something up similar, just making sure that everyone has the access to success. And then also financial um, scholarships. There's always gonna be scholarships that you can apply to through your university, through uh, student orgs um, like C and other women's groups. Um, there's lots of scholarships out there, so it really is going to be on you to find them and apply. They're not going to they're not going to come to you, um, but definitely don't sleep on those because there's a lot that don't even get applied for and money that is allocated towards scholarships that doesn't get paid out because people didn't apply. So just keep applying. Um, and then there's always campus jobs too. That's a really great resource to get a job somewhere close on campus um, to fit around your schedule. Campus jobs will be really flexible with your classes, but I think the biggest thing on this one is the mental health aspect. I actually went on academic probation and almost flunked out of my major for two semesters because I kind of let my mental health um, slip away from me and I stopped going to classes and it was not good. Um, so I, I was forced to go to counseling as part of the remediation for um, my grades and I wish I had gone sooner because it was really helpful, um, set me on a positive course for my mental health journey. So, don't feel like you can't do that, um, whether you feel like you're on top of everything or not. I even just went to talk about stress from school and exams and stress that I had and ways that I took exams that were not healthy. So there's seriously so many resources there for you. Your university is really gonna care about your individual success. So please use the resources that are there for you. Um, ask questions of everyone, always feel comfortable to do that. Everyone wants to help you along your journey. And the final thing is really as you're going through your college career, especially when you're starting to look for internships and later on when you're starting to look for careers, something that I cannot express is that um, employers are really looking for a well-rounded individual. So don't only focus on being in student orgs. Don't only focus on good grades. Like employers want to see that you can kind of do it all. Like you can balance student orgs, you can balance leadership positions, you can balance work if that's an avenue that you choose to do if you want to work. 
and that you can balance your good grades. Like seeing that you can take on a bunch of responsibility and leadership roles and still succeed, that's going to be really important to an employer. So don't just like kind of put all your eggs in one basket, um, if that makes sense. And then study abroad. There's scholarships for that. Do your best to study abroad or do something else. I volunteered abroad personally, and it's just one of the things that have really set my college experience apart for myself of just something that I really loved and enjoyed. So please try to do that. There are scholarships specifically for studying abroad. That's my two cents. <laughs> Sabrina, thank you so much. Um, you hit the nail on the head. All of these tips are things that I, I mean, I know I did in college and it helped me get to where I am today at Turner. Um, you know, I, I volunteered abroad with Engineers at Borders with the Human Rights Fellowship and um, joined a sorority in college and worked three jobs to get through. And you can still be successful and do that instead of just focusing solely on a GPA. Um, and through all of that, I learned a lot about myself. And so with that, I'm going to kick it over to Erica, who's going to talk a little bit about like finding yourself in self-advocacy. So Erica? Thank you, Kelsey. And I, before I get started, I do want to um, also commend Kelsey and Sabrina for just being vulnerable right then. Like, I feel you with the counseling. I also did a little bit of counseling when I was in school. There is no shame in my game. It made me a better individual and a better communicator. Um, I actually, there's a slogan, there's many slogans and acronyms with Turner, but one of them that I like to use a lot is um, people, projects, profit, like first it's the people, they care about the people first, then the projects, and then the profit, you know, and in, it should be in that order, we have to care about ourselves and our, our family members our team members next to us, these are the people that we work with see every day, even sometimes more often than our own friends and family. So um, with speaking of people, that is actually my passion. I know I work in the finance department, but I, I, I people tend to come to me as like the auntie of Turner. Come talk to Erica, you know, she's going to give you some good advice, a few laughs and what have you, but I'm all about the people and especially self-advocacy. So I have this picture on the screen um, I didn't know Marquita was doing prizes, so I definitely would have had a few a little, uh, little, little gifts to give away, but that's okay. So I want to tell you guys what the definition of self-advocacy is, and then I want to ask, the, I want to open up the floor for some feedback, okay? So the definition of self-advocacy refers to an individual's ability to effectively communicate, convey, lobby, negotiate, or assert his or her own interests, desires, needs, and rights to further their career development and or get considered for a preferred assignment. I know that's a lot of words. However, on the next screen, it'll be written up there again for you, okay? So why self-advocacy is important, it's an important skill because it's an important skill to start and continue to develop as you maneuver through all of life's adventures. You know, there's an obvious, it's going to be peaks, valleys, lows, highs. It's all an adventure. We got to take it in stride and make sure that we are always advocating for ourselves. Okay. Self advocacy includes being assertive, knowing one's rights, negotiating, and speaking up for your cause. Okay. So I would like for you guys to caption this picture for me. Feel free to raise your hand if you want to put something into the chat. You can go ahead and tell me what you see in this picture. Um, you know, you um, your, your audio is a little, just give it a second. Your audio is a little. Oh, oh no. How, the progress of the other people. Oh, well, that ending was phenomenal, but can we get you to repeat that? Your audio went out just for a second, huh? Whoever that was speaking, can you just tell me that one more time your audio was kicking in and out? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's, let's, get another, let's get another person. That's okay. okay. We'll come back. We'll come back. Anybody else, can you, can you caption that picture? Can y'all, you got it. 
two people raised their hands. Um, and y'all, you go ahead and unmute. Yeah, um, I think it's how that women have all these like uh, pre-assigned responsibilities before mm. they can do whatever their dream is while guys have that free path to pursue whatever they want. But women are kind of held back because like they have their womanly duties before they can do um, their job. They're not supposed to put their job first. They're supposed to take care of their kids and like cook and all that stuff and they're not really allowed to put their dreams first but slowly mm -hmm. that's changing but I think that's what the picture is trying to show yes absolutely I'm looking through the chat I see a lot of people said that too hurdles of women women getting pulled off track not everybody faces the same kind of race the obstacle course of a woman come on yes all of that so I have I had I I use this image in a lot of our women's um, group uh, meetings as well. It's kind of similar to what we're doing here. Let's, and it's a, it's a good conversation piece. So I'm going to tell you a few things that I see and what my interpretation is and how it relates to self-advocacy. Okay. So first thing I saw is the women are looking in fear to the men to their right. Why? Why? The men are laser focused. They are not concerned about the person to the left, to the right. It could be a whole gorilla next to them. They probably wouldn't even pay it any kind of attention because they are focused on the end goal. They are, their, the women's body language is very like kind of, to me, it looks like scrunched in, kind of timid, like the tense, but the men are very relaxed, like shoulders relaxed and uh, it, it, it's just crazy to me how we tend to look, maybe look to the men for guidance. Maybe we're looking for the men to even start the race. Why? We, we, we are responsible for ourselves, are we not? Just, just throwing it out there, just a question. Not, don't need to answer. But, okay, so the body language of the ladies is that they're in fear that they're going to run the race, but we're, they're not going to communicate what their need is. We would need for those predetermined obstacles or, or, or respond, home responsibilities to be removed so that it's a fair run of this race. Why would we, why would we even step up to that plate knowing that all of this stuff is in our way, but there's nothing, there's nothing in the other men's area speak up hey can we can we remove some if not all of these things why are these my responsibilities to meet a goal a and a a goal at the home a goal at the, my professional place of work wherever there you go equity love it also like the young lady said the social the societal biases and a pre-assignments like the laundry and the cooking that are in our in the women's lane i'm not claiming that to be in my lane in the women in the pictures lane okay um because of our gender we're typically assigned these roles in the home and it's assumed that these duties are going to inhibit our our ability to finish the race and 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 do it well you know exceedingly well but no, that's not, that's not the case. If I desire to get to the end, I'm going to get it. Women are notoriously horrible, unfortunately, at advocating for ourselves. So, but we do, we do it better for other people than we do it for ourselves. Why is this? Just asking a question, is it fear? Do we think we won't be able to measure up to the men that are on the outside with no obstacles? Do we feel we're undeserving of, finishing the race and getting to the promotion that the men are attaining. But tell you a quick story. So there was a position at Turner that, um, that came about, we have internal postings and I, am, like I said, I'm in finance, but it has something to, more to do with my passion, which is the people. It has to do with the, our diversity, equity and inclusion. Uh, we were looking for a new manager for um, in our national uh, or our corporate corporate office. I love people. Like I said, I'm like the auntie of Turner. Everybody comes to me. I feel like I connect with people very well. However, I did not apply 
for that position. Didn't even read the qualifications. I knew that it was out there. We have conversations with our, um, with our CEO every Friday. They make announcements of what's coming up, what's new, what's happening behind the scenes that's going to be coming up soon. And I was like, oh, yo, that sounds so dope. I want to do this. And then when it came up, I just didn't, I didn't do it. And I had absolutely no reason as to why I didn't do it. I just didn't. And so I did not even advocate for myself in that position. And I, self-advocacy is definitely something that I constantly have to work on. I am, I'm boisterous, I'm friendly. However, to really truly advocate for myself it takes practice and it takes intention to do it well. Okay, next slide, please. All right, like I said, these, this definition, I'm not gonna read again, um, but that is the definition that I read initially before we uh, started looking at the, um, at the caption. So in short, self-advocacy is teaching people how to treat you. You're gonna set boundaries and set expectations you're gonna help others understand what it is exactly that you need and what your requirements are to get those needs met. And also convey the kind of support needed to achieve maximum performance. So ask yourself, how do I advocate for myself? Do people take advantage of my kindness or my quietness, my quiet nature? People tend to run over people like that, but we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a few little tips and tricks maybe that will help encourage you to ignite this fire in you, right? For example, what happened at a restaurant uh, or imagine you're at a restaurant, your, your food comes out totally wrong. Not even, you ordered lobster and you got steak, for example, right? Are you the type of person that's going to say, you know what, this steak still smell good, and I did kind of, you know, want some red meat tonight. I'm just going, I'm just going to do the steak and potatoes. It's fine, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just keep my seventy-five dollars for the lobster. I'll pay. I'll just eat the steak. Or are you going to speak up on it? Uh, sir, this is not what I wanted. I, my mouth was ready for this lobster. <laughs> And now I have to go, I have to chew through this dry steak. No, that's not going to happen. So that's, a, that's just like a general example of self-advocacy. You would advocate to have your needs met and your desires met. You want what you want. You want it, that lobster, get your lobster, okay? I know, right, $75. I live in Florida now, so everything is expensive, but fresh. So fresh. Okay. Let me keep going because I know I'm past my three minutes already. So it is a common misconception that self-advocacy is just about speaking out or standing up for yourself. But that, that's good, but that's not it. It, it. You don't have to be the loudest person and most assertive person in the room to advocate for yourself. Remember that. From a professional standpoint, one of the biggest ways you can advocate for yourself is to ask more questions. Ask your employers to help develop you professionally. Ask them for more training and professional development courses, like how did they get to where they are right now? Um, as, another approach is to uh, ask more questions about the workload. So as I said earlier, sometimes people will take advantage of your quiet nature, and that happens a lot in corporate America, not going to lie. Uh, your boss sees that you work well, you are a hard worker, you're diligent, and you will stay late and put all your all into everything that you produce. So your boss sees that, she knows or he knows that you're going to do A plus work, they give you more work. Expecting the same quality and the same exact uh, intention and delivery that you put into the prior assignment, right? But you still have your other responsibilities that you have to do on top of this new thing that they asked you to do. Don't just take it on because that's going to be overwhelming. It's going to be a burden. The quality of that product is probably going to lessen because now you have more things to do. You, ask, you can ask your boss 
you know what? I understand that this is a priority for you. However, let's just take a step back and I'll let you know the things that I'm also working on. Help me understand what's, what's really priority so that I can help meet your expectations and your deadlines. This will help display your self-awareness skills, knowing what you can and cannot handle, as well as leadership skills, prioritizing your responsibilities and, and taking initiative on what to learn, how to learn, what to learn more and maximize your performance. So how do we as success? <laughs> I saw some class, I saw them snap Sabrina. <laughs> so how do we as successful women engineers improve our self-advocacy? Well, like I told you earlier, with that position that I did not apply for, that I did not even try to apply for, now I'm going to fake it till I make it. Everything that comes up having to do with diversity, equity, and inclusion, I am like Johnny on the spot. Whoever's name is on it, I'm emailing them, I'm IMing them. Hey, I saw this on TKN, which is our internal kind of um, SharePoint website. How can I be more involved here? I'm actively, pro proactively advocating for myself to say, hey, I'm interested. Advocacy is like a muscle. You have to practice it. You have to tell yourself, I'm good. I'm good enough. I deserve this. What was I thinking? Of course, I got this. And just like you would go to the gym and work out a muscle and condition your muscles to lift stronger weights. You're gonna condition your mind that you got this. I can advocate for myself. I'm gonna get this job done. I'm gonna work hard and get, I'm gonna get that raise. I'm gonna get the accolade. I'm gonna get that position that I, I, I want, okay? Also shift your focus, try to shift your focus. I say, I say these things firmly, but I know that it's easier said than done. So let me soften it up a bit. Try to shift your focus from apprehension to assertiveness or from being concerned to being confident. Remember, the person who doesn't make any mistakes is most likely to make, is, is unlikely to make anything because they're going to quit. They're not doing anything. I'm, I'm too scared to make a mistake. So I'm not going to try anything. That's not okay. All right. Benjamin Franklin said, said I haven't failed. I've just had 10,000 ideas that didn't work. Turn that around. That's right, I didn't fail. Mm -mm. I just kept it moving. Make the best out of every, every opportunity, okay? Someone is always watching and sometimes waiting on you to fail. But honey, we not gonna fail. We got this, all right? So in conclusion, I know that was more than three minutes, I'm so sorry, but self-advocacy is such a critical part of healthy relationships, long-term success, and overall happiness in life. So I wish you the best of luck with advocating for yourself. Erica, thank you so much. Before I jump over, Renee, did you wanna say something? I saw you raised your hand a couple times. You can unmute if you can. And actually, I know a few of you all actually had your hands raised and or commented specifically to certain slides that Erica was covering. If we didn't catch it, just hold on to that thought or jot it down real quick. We'll come back to it at the end, okay? Absolutely. Um, so we'll keep moving on. Um, so Erica, thank you again so much. I will say I didn't get my current position without asking for it. I had to advocate for myself to get the role that I'm in now today. Um, and if I didn't ask, I would have never known. And like Erica could have potentially been, darn, what if I had applied for that position? What could have happened? Um, the worst that they're going to say is no. So you just yep. ask and keep going. Um, you know, and these are, this is one small aspect of becoming a leader in an organization. And so with that, I'm going to kick it over to Elise, who's going to talk about, you know, developing some skill sets as you become a leader. So Elise, all right, ladies. So um, developing your skill set, the best way to develop your skill set is to identify your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, what are some ways to help identify your strengths and your weaknesses? Um, set goals for yourself and then check in. Are you crossing goals off of your list? Are you managing your time and other tasks and engagements well? Are there things you can improve on? Um, find a mentor. 
Um, early in life, a mentor might be a friend, a relative, a teacher. In college, it may look like an advisor or professor. As you go into the world and join the workforce in adulthood, uh, a mentor may be a supervisor or a coworker, um, someone else employed at your company. Um, when I first started at Turner as an intern um, on my very first project, which was a convention center, um, the senior engineer took me under his wing. Um, he invested his time in me and that has now blossomed into a nine year uh, mentorship relationship. Um, I honestly don't know where I would be without him in my career. Um, he pushed me to continue to set new goals for myself, helped me with career planning, gave me constructive feedback, feedback in areas to improve, and so much more. Um, I cannot stress finding a mentor enough, and I have a feeling that everyone here is going to repeat that because it's so, so true. Um, another uh, way to identify strengths and weaknesses is to seek feedback from others on your strengths and weaknesses. Um, asking for feedback and receiving feedback can be difficult, but it's really important for personal growth. Um, if you're still struggling to identify your strengths and weaknesses, or maybe you just want to start with yourself, um, there's some really great resources out there that I would recommend. Um, Crystal Knows is an online website that has a ton of awesome quizzes that helps you understand your leadership, communication, and personality profiles. Um, understanding your communication strengths is so important. Um, how do you interact with others? What's your best way of communication? Is it text, phone, in person? How are you most comfortable with communicating? Um, something I heard actually today, conveniently, I just wrote it down to uh, tell you guys, is 70% of the communication in the workplace is nonverbal. So if you're most comfortable and you're best at in-person talking, then maybe we should think of ways that I can improve on emails and memos and whatever it is, texts uh, to a client or a coworker, because um, 70% is a lot. Um, some other really great resources. There's two really, really awesome books. I hate reading. I am also dyslexic. So I'm, a very, I'm an audio book person, uh, but the way they learn and strengths finders are two really, really great books. I would recommend reading or listening to. Strengths finder has um, like a quiz or um, a guide on the end that kind of helps you. It's an awesome book. A lot of employers have um, their employees read it. Um, after you have done some self-reflection and identified your strengths and weaknesses, I would recommend going online and looking up some career options that interest you. Um, find a job posting and read the job description. Does it align with your strengths? Maybe some of the things listed match your weaknesses. That's okay. Your weaknesses don't have to forever be your weaknesses. Um, you've identified them and you can work on them. So to wrap it up, um, your strengths are going to be what make you stick out from peers, another job candidate, or your coworkers. Don't let your weaknesses define or stop you. Like Erica said, you find that confidence and use it. Find a mentor, seek feedback, and always know that growing and learning doesn't end at high school or college. You're going to keep doing it. Any questions? Elise, thank you so much. Can you drop the names of those books in the chat for, for the students so they can look it up? Absolutely. Thank you. And again, everything Elise said is spot on. Um, you keep learning and you keep growing. And in many, me taking over this new role I'm in as a procurement manager, I went from being a leader on a team, but not managing a team. Um, you know, I was the project engineer on a project and then now I'm a department head and something that I learned was because I was really good at my job before, it doesn't mean I'm bad at my job now, but there's a different mindset shift that I have to learn. And that was a downfall for me at the beginning because I didn't understand this shift. And, you know, through coaching and mentorship and talking with my boss, she really helped me through the first couple months of uneasiness. And now I think I'm in a good groove, but 
you know, you learn from your weaknesses. You look at your teachers that you have now, your coaches, um, and see how they lead, how they teach. What what can you pull from that to start developing who you are and who you want to become as you grow through college and into your first job and maybe your second job, your career, and um, just really figure out who you want to be. And so with that, Brache is going to take it off and talk about building your personal brand. So Brache. I want to first off say that I am just in awe of all my team, just so you guys know, I'm the last one, but I'm just like, man, <laughs> Like, I feel like I'm learning so much. And I want to even just go back to what Lisa's saying about personal tests. I am the person that will take every test to know me. I am up to like five and I keep them in a binder and I review them almost every year. And it's very true when it's great when you know yourself well enough to be able to fully communicate that to others. So learning your communication style, learning how you deal with conflict. You'll be very surprised at how you are under stress and how your personality changes and understanding what that means. And it's not something that pe some people get real like, oh, it's a little silly to do, but it also helps you learn that what your triggers are in your personal life, your professional life. And as you grow as a, a person, a woman, as a, a parent, and even in marriage. So that's something that I think that everyone should do is learning about yourself. So when I say that, I want to talk about your personal branding, because a personal brand is all about who you are and who you represent. So when someone hears me and Brashe Anderson, or even if someone hears Kelsey or Sabrina or Marquita, what is the first thing you want them to say about you? And that matters. So if I'm going somewhere and it's anyone in my company, one thing I want them to know is someone didn't know me and they say it is Brashe is a leader. Brashe is always making someone smile. Brashe has integrity. Brashe does like they want, you want them to say something that means what you represent in your heart. You want someone, you don't ever want to be in a room where your brand is that you're negative. You don't want someone ever to say anything behind closed doors that you pull people down. Oh, they're slacker. Oh, they're this. Like you always want to represent and walk around in a setting that you actually walk and talk the way you feel deep down in your heart. Because what happens is when you have that branding and you walk with that, you're going to run into things in life. And we talked about these obstacles where someone may not possess that in your brand and you may have to walk away from that. So when Lisa company mentors and life mentors, that is very good because for me, my personal brand represents my family, my integrity, my mentorship, and helping young kids like yourself. That is who I am. I thrive off of those things. I'm always trying to help the next generation, and I'm always passionate about doing everything I can to ensure that no one behind me is left behind. So, selecting company mentor and a life mentor, and your goal and perception is your image. So, on I'm a huge sports person. So if anybody else knows me, they know I'm an advocate of women's sports. <laughs> Let's just start there. I'm a woman and I support all things women. If you are a team soccer fan, Megan Rapino fan, welcome. Come over to this side. I am a fan. <laughs> Allison Felix, huge fan, and we're going to discuss her. So personal branding, and we can jump over to the next slide a little bit. So knowing who you are. Allison Felix, if you're not familiar, I please want you to just do a little research on her. She is the most decorated female U.S. Olympian track and field in history with 11 gold medals. But Allison Felix's story starts in 2016. In 2016, she lost a tremendous race to Shawnee Miller, who was out of Bahamas, because this young lady dove into the finish line. And people automatically go, oh, she was robbed, and who knows if she can ever do this again, but don't worry, we'll stand beside her, and we're going to fight for Allison Felix. But the problem was, when we talk about those things that happen for us women in life, she got married and was pregnant with her child. Nike refused to, they actually cut her endorsement 70%, leaving her technically, she doesn't get paid for races anymore. So now she's living off a 70% decrease in salary, which feeds her family. And then in negotiation, they all of a sudden just decide to part ways because what she believes in, she believes in family, she believes in her motherhood, she believes in integrity, and they didn't believe in that. So they parted away. So what people automatically assumed about her in 2018 after she had her daughter was she will never win another gold medal again. Imagine having this big spotlight being sponsored by one of the biggest companies in the world and them telling you that what you represent is not who they think you are anymore. That's baffling. That's, that's knowing who you are, but she had the confidence 
to stop everything and walk away from Nike. And she started her own shoe line that she runs in called Sasha. And she's also partnered with Athletica, who's actually passionate about women empowerment and women's health and how we should support each other. And she's partnered with them. And Oprah, if you watch Oprah, Oprah actually wears her shoe and endorses it. And so when you sit back and we talk about your personal brand, Allison Felix went on to 2021, where she ran one of the best records of her life after having a baby, after telling someone that she was no longer going to be an Olympian and winning the 11 most gold medals. And now she's the most decorated U.S. track and field Olympian in history because she knew who she was. The problem sometimes, and I always tell people, just because the door closed behind you doesn't mean there's not another door opening. That's what sometimes we forget to realize. Sometimes you might need to turn around. Sometimes you may need to go left. Sometimes you might walk down a lonely highway or a lonely road by yourself, but guess what? Just because that door closes, there's always another one. And all of us on this phone call, like Kelsey said, sometimes you build your own. I'm gonna go ahead and create this door and I'm gonna walk into it and show these people where my light is. And that's something that she did. And she proved them all wrong because we can never get so complacent when we get the job, when we get the career, when you get in college, there's going to be people who tell you that we can't do it. And one thing is you have to remember your values. You have to remember who you are. And you have to always tell yourself, and we were always telling you, you're going to have to fake it till you make it. Because she had to tell herself or her family, she had to keep running as hard as she could, even when her records at home probably never matched that record that she ran that day. She probably was running way under her limit and got on that track and decided that in that moment that I'm going to give it every blood, sweat, and tear, and guess what she wanted. So we have to do that for ourselves. So I want to show you guys a video that she did that kind of represents her story. I move a lot, sorry. <laughs> Patience. Patience isn't waiting. It's active, constant. It's the endless pursuit, the undying fire driving you forward. You gotta finish this up. Come on, keep going. You got this. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Good job. Because when nothing is certain, nothing is. Patience. Because when nothing is certain, nothing is off limits. And this journey isn't about finish lines. It's about milestones. Every breath. Every stride. Every tear of triumph and pain has brought you here. To this moment. To your ultimate self. Be patient. So, at the end of this presentation, if you don't take anything from none of us, it doesn't matter how you finish, none of us are going to think about every obstacle, every hurdle that you climbed on your back. The only thing that matters to me is how you got there. Your start doesn't determine your future. So many people think that. So many people think that this is how I start out, this is how I'm gonna end. That's not true. You're gonna make it, you're gonna push through, you have to have the patience and endurance. But guess what? None of us are gonna get up, give up on you. So make sure you don't give up on yourself. And that's one big thing that for me and your personal brand is, make sure you ingrain that in you. Because as long as you're fighting, guess what? Everyone on this phone call is going to be sitting in your corner. We're going to be cheering you on and we're going to fight until you keep going. We always want to make sure you know that. And as she said it, your ultimate determination is basically your ultimate self. And we want you to reach that. And that is my ordeal. <laughs> Rache, thank that's you that's so that. much for that. Um, sorry about the video. Uh, Marquita messaged me saying, oh, it's working well. And I clicked over and it cut the video off. So <laughs> my bad, but thank you so much um, for talking about personal branding and 
I'm sure you could see throughout the presentation and the panel that each of us individually have our own personal brand. We're all different and we all are confident and know who we are. Um, so my question to, to the other ladies on the call is, what do you think your personal brand is? Like, say it in a word or two, put it in the chat, raise your hand. Like, we want to get you guys engaged a little bit. It's okay if it takes you a couple of minutes to think of your personal brand, because I can imagine it wouldn't be something you figure out just right away. But just what are the first three words that pop in your head about yourself? Definitely. And, and one thing that was what you guys are thinking, there we go. And some. Go ahead, Rache. But one thing I would definitely say, one thing I do with the kids, a couple of kids I mentor, if you can't think of it, don't worry about it. Stand in the mirror and look at yourself and then tell yourself everything great about you. And then you'll find your brain within that. There we go. Reliable, driven, honest, trustworthy, outgoing, shy. Being kind. kind a lot. I love that. Mm -hmm. yes. Kindness to people. We really need that. <laughs> Brave, I love that one. Motivated, busy, there you go. Strong, respectful, I like that one too. These are all great. These are just so when I was in high school, I would know what to put in here. So it's just amazing that you ladies already know Oh, about yourself and are able to identify as having a personal brand. Um, I think that's amazing. Let's do a gift card moment right quick. Okay. So now that you all have listed out what you, oh, someone. So, um, Renee, we're going to work with you a little bit, I see, because it says you're introverted, and I think you said shy at the top, too. Sometimes you're afraid to speak up. So we're going to work with you a little bit on that for sure. But now that you guys um, listed out what you all feel is your three words to describe your personal brand, name one company that you think would align with that. So it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to necessarily be all about an engineering company. It could be any, any company you can think of that you feel aligns with who you are and what your personal brand is about. And I have, I'm going to actually give it to Hannah because I believe you answered first. You said all birds. So now that you've said all birds, um, you did get your $25 gift card, but you know what you rewarded with having to speak up. So tell me a little bit more about that company, Hannah, and why you selected that one for how it aligns with your personal brand. Can I just unmute and say it? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, so Allbirds is a brand I've been so invested in. I love them. They're basically a sustainable shoe brand. And they, oh my gosh, they're so great. They promote all these other small businesses as well as their own. And they basically, they focus mainly on making sure that all of the materials that their shoes are made out of are sustainable, reusable, ethical, come from ethical sources, what I thought was like so, so important. And they also make sure that they're getting information and they're hiring from diverse backgrounds so that, you know, their opinions aren't always biased. And just the way they engineer their shoes as well, I find really interesting because they were rated, I think a couple years ago, like the most comfortable shoes in like the world. So I think they're one of the best shoe brands and I would love to work for them one day. <laughs> Allbirds, I'm writing that down. Allbirds.com. Yes, it's literally exactly how it sounds. Yeah. I'm going to pick one more person because you all did so well with this because I was actually thinking y'all are going to take a few more moments. Like, I don't know what <laughs> Y'all are on it. Y'all got y'all companies ready to go. And see, I see a few NASA. So I'm going to pick one person who I haven't heard from in a while. So let's go with... Ooh, and I'm going to pick somebody that I'm not even going to say your name right, and I'm sorry in advance. Fix me as soon as I finish and tell me how to pronounce it. But Hebatola, I think that's how you say it. Yes, that's, that's kind of how you say it, yeah. It's kind of like still wrong, but close enough. But how do you say it properly? Yeah. Uh, name Hebatola, but my nickname's Heba. 
Heba. We'll go with Heba. I like Heba, but I am going to learn your real world, your your whole name because that's important. It's your name. So I'm going to learn that. But go ahead and tell me more about why you selected NASA. I selected NASA because I believe that like they're open to everyone and it really shows that hard work gets you to the t to what you want to do. Like when I read all of the people that went through so much and pushed forward and had to like give it all, it just shows you that what you're doing is not only one little thing isn't gonna stop you, like you have to push push through. And it's really the strength that the book pushes you and puts Love you there. Love that. Okay, Kelsey, I'm gonna give it back to you. Uh, that was the stat. I think we did two, right? So it's two. I got y'all covered. Both got $25 gift cards. We're gonna go ahead and move on. <laughs> Thanks, Marquita. The, you know, I'm proud that even you ladies have the courage to speak up. You know, I mean, in high school and being on a program like this, I don't know if I would have said anything. Um, I felt like I was a little bit shyer growing up. I don't think you could tell that now, but, um, you know, I've, I've grown through college and learning and being involved and listening and, um, you know, take it all in. Like being a leader isn't something that necessarily is like, I'm going to be a leader today. It's taking initiative and being like, I'm going to pave my own way and, I'm going to listen and learn from my peers too. Being a leader isn't a one person show. It is about being someone that people look up to, want to work with, want to work for. And to be a leader in an industry, whether it's in construction or engineering or math or science as a, like a lab researcher or a doctor or whatever, it's about like conducting yourself in a way that people want to be with you. They want to be on your side and they also feel empowered to, to grow as a leader themselves. The best leaders don't stunt other people's growth. They build them up in the hopes that someday that that person's going to be their boss, right? And you want to keep growing and learning. Um, and I hope that you guys took, or you ladies, excuse me, took a lot away from today and um, you know, hopefully I can see some of you ladies working at Turner someday in the future. And um, if you have any questions for us, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, if you didn't get it from today, we're all passionate about helping growing the next generation. And, you know, any questions you have, like I'll answer it. I know Brashe will, Elise, Erica, and Sabrina, like all of us are here to help and grow you ladies into the next next phase of your life, which is hopefully college or the trades, who knows, but you know, so with that, um, Marquita, I'll hand it over to you to talk about this post-event survey. Awesome. 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 Well, that was phenomenal. You ladies did amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. You know, I was amen and a yes and over here in the background, especially about the college prep stuff. Everything they told you is true. Everything about learning your strengths and weaknesses. We've been talking about that since we began this year. It's true. So please make sure that you're taking all these things in. It's so important as you guys continue on to learn and build your skills. Um, so one thing I wanted to do before I actually close us out, while you're working on getting this post event survey done by getting that QR code, grabbing it and telling us what you thought about the presentation, do not drop off. I'm going to give the floor back to you all again. Um, and I want each of you all to describe. I think, Rache, you did a phenomenal job. So if you just have anything to add, you can add it. But you don't have to go back over your stuff again because that was great. But every one of you all, tell me what your personal brand is. And I think we lost Sabrina, but we're going to go ahead and start with uh, Kelsey. What do you think your personal brand is and why you love Turner or if it aligns with that brand? Well, first of all, Sabrina is back. She joined, I think she had her computer died. So she joined okay, her phone. Good. So Perfect. I see her on there. Um, but gosh, put me on the spot with my personal brand. Um, I sure you know, did. I think we're, we're showing them what we're wanting them to do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I'll say that I'm I'm strong and I'm confident and, and I'm outspoken. I, I am a big advocate for people. Um, and whether it's for myself or for a peer or an employee who I think deserves to get to that next level and needs an opportunity and they're being overlooked, I speak up and I don't shy away from the hard conversations. Um, you know, and 
Turner has allowed me to do that in so many different ways. Um, I am, I mean, I wouldn't have moved to three different cities if I didn't love working for Turner and what we do here. Turner's a family. Like we, I spend more time with my coworkers than I do with my friends and family outside of work. Like we are at work 40 hours a week. And that is more than the time I get at home after work and then sleeping and then on the weekends. And I wouldn't do what I do if I didn't love where I work. And I think Turner, Turner generates and grows leaders. And I'm very passionate about helping continue that legacy within Turner with the next generation and the people that are coming up underneath me. So that. Okay. No, I'm saying you were saying you, I'm putting you on the spot and you were ready, girl. You were ready. (laughs) Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to just throw it over to one of the other ladies and put them on the spot. Sure. I'm going to go with Erica. How about you go next? Okay. So my personal brand would be, uh, I saw it in the chat a lot. So it definitely would revolve around kindness and um, authenticity. Just being your, being true to yourself and having people understand what your true self is. You know, like, like Brache said, your brand, what, what they say about you, what they hear about you, is that really what they know about you, right? Um, and I always just want to be always me. I can't be anybody else. That's not going to last. <laughs> That's pretending. I know I said fake it till you make it earlier, but don't fake your own personality. Keep don't it be true fake. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it true. Keep it true to you, your desires. Yes your skills and your passion. And like I said before, people definitely um, uh, being reliable to people and just, like I said, kindier. So that's probably my brand. I love that. It comes across, Auntie Erica. Uh, right, see? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sabrina, what you got? Uh-oh, no audio yet? Okay, so let's see, at least what you got. All right, so I would say organized. I am OCD. I actually sometimes get paid to organize people's classes for them on the side. So organized in, in my work and my personal life. Um, strong. Construction is a very male-dominated industry, and I know all my Turner ladies on this call are strong, even if they didn't say it out loud and dedicated um, in work, in my relationship with my husband, in my friendships. Um, I'm all, I've always been a very dedicated person. So those are my three. Did we get Sabrina back? Yeah, Sabrina, are you back? We can't you know what, you. if you have no audio, you can always type it in the chat for us as well then that way we can still get your feedback and Rache, you know what i'm sure you got more to give on your personal brand <laughs> so i will let you go next well i was so i was doing the counseling oh i'm good now guys <laughs> so, um, man, like, when i think of i rewrite it I, I i rewrite it every almost every i do everything almost every year just to remind myself so my personal brand and back to what i was saying is definitely um mentorship is at the top uh, my family, my faith is basically everything that represents me. If, if people know me, they know that I'm always talking about um, some young lady or young man that I am mentoring or I'm actually networking on their behalf. Like that's something I'm extremely passionate about. I always tell people I work extremely hard for not just me, but I work hard for the little girl and little boys who don't think they can make it. And they see someone like us on this phone call who don't look like them or they look like them and they go, no, they did it so I can. Like that is who I am thick and through no matter where I'm at. I love that. Um, and Sabrina, she did, uh, I think, did she write it in there? Um, Sabrina. Yes, she wrote, it, she wrote uh, it in the chat. Do you see it, Marquita? Yes, yes. Advocacy, reliability, dedicate, uh, and dedication. That is her personal brand. So a lot of what you're seeing, it, it, you know, from from us is things that you guys are already developing in yourself. So look at how how wonderful it is to see like where you could potentially be, right? Um, and, and like Brashe said, you constantly 
um, revisit that conversation of what is my personal brand? What is what is something that I truly think um, makes up who I am? That happens on a consistent basis. And depending on where you're at in life, especially with her example, you know, things change. Um, she was a track and field star, and I'm sure that was her life, right, for a long time. But then she had motherhood. That was something that was important to her. Being a wife, I'm sure, also was important to her. And her values begin to shift. So just know that where you started absolutely can pivot and change, but always revisit it. Always think about it in everything that you do. It will impact the work you do. It will it will ba basically encompass your passion and your vision for your future. So don't forget about that. Um, so I think you all have had plenty of time to get this supposed to event survey done. And I'm sure you guys have been doing this the whole time, listening to the panel, but I hope you all also made sure to get that feedback in as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up here. It's been just a pleasure to learn from each and every one of these women on this line. The one thing that I want you all to know is that we want to encourage you to know that there are diverse perspectives and voices out there in the engineering field at companies like Turner. Um, you're not going to be alone. That's why we're all here. It's been reiterated that we are your support system. We are your community. We are your village. So don't ever hesitate to tap into the resources that we have for you, like what we've shared this evening. So I just want to affirm you in that. I want to encourage you to keep developing that personal brand, keep building on those strengths and weaknesses, keep understanding that just because they, they have this, this goal post here where you start, right, if you're on the track, and you think, oh my God, what's going on to the right of me? And instead of it being on the on a on outside on the ground or the pavement, it might be in your classroom and you're looking to your 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 cohort and it's a bunch of men that you think are gonna win and you might not actually win with them because they have all these advantages. Trust me, you haven't even seen what you can do yet. So please, please, please keep yourselves encouraged and inspired and never give up. Okay. We don't have quitters on Team Sweet Next. We don't have quitters on Team Sheila. We're going to meet our goals and exceed them, okay? So I just want to say that to you all and let you know that this is not it for you. You're going to keep pushing and excelling. So I'm going to go ahead and move us to close here um, and say thank you to our Sheila sponsors. Of course, without them, there will be no us. We could not run this program um, and have these experiences. Motorola Solutions Foundation, General Motors, uh, Amateur Radio Digital Communications, Akamai Foundation, and Turner Construction. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, especially this evening. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I appreciate you all. Um, next on our list is um, the Sheila News. So, and you know what I've been doing that y'all ain't been noticing is that I'm clicking my mouse thinking that I'm the one running this slide. I'm not. <laughs> So Sheila News. So what's up next is the Sweet Next Connect on December 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Central. So this is going to be a very sweet, a very special Sweet Next Connect because this one is going to focus on all that you've learned this week about leadership and advocacy, uh, not just for um, you being an advocate for other people, but finding support and how to help yourself, which is uber important as well. So we can't wait to connect you with your mentors. It's going to be a very special group. We'll have Motorola uh, Foundation with us tomorrow so uh, i hope you guys will enjoy that as well on deck we have how to make dollars make sense navigating the financial aid process that will be with miss tina Steele, and that will be on december 8th at 6 30 p.m ct google classroom i know y'all love me talking about the google classroom <laughs> everything will be there all your materials your on-demand recordings your connections to your peers access to other additional resources from the previous year uh just as a rule of thumb anything that is not fy22 uh, you can still access it, but it is not going to help you for your certificate of completion. So make sure when you're completing your takeaway assignments, you're looking at all the content for FY22. Those are the ones that will count towards your certificate of completion, just as an FYI. If you need the class code or have any additional questions about the classroom and its, and its experience, go ahead and email us at sweetnext at sweet.org. Um, again, sign up for our Sheila Ambassador Program. It's a way for you to be an advocate and also be a leader at the same time. 
by helping us co-moderate sessions, be our little social media influencer, or just simply share a video of you telling us about your experience this year. So go ahead and help us uh, share exactly what this program is all about by becoming an ambassador. I dropped all that information in the Google Classroom, or you know what to do. Email us at sweetnext at sweet.org. Thank you all for stepping into the room this evening and sharing in our campfire session with Turner Construction. We thank them, we thank you, and we hope you have a wonderful evening.